Hi there! Here we'll talk about how to create this visceral rocket exhaust in Blender. And if you look at the window down below, you'll see that the vertices are actually uh, under the influence of some noise function. In this case, it was the modifier called wave. Uh, so we're going to open a new file and try to do the same thing. So let's open a new file and start from the basics. The basic shape that you want is a cone. But there's a better way to do that, which is to create a... Uh, a UV sphere and cut the top half away. So let's delete the top half and then stretch the bottom half like really long, uh, something like this. Then the next thing is to add the wave modifier. And if you look closely when you hit the play button, uh, it's actually moving, but we need to uncheck the X so that the vertices will start moving in a wavy fashion like this. If you uh, angle your viewport, you'll notice that starting from zero, only half of the side is animating. Or you have to increase the Y value here. So 10 should be enough. By the way, I'm using metric units, so it's you're, you're seeing millimeters here. Yours could be inches, could be different, you know. Also, the other thing you have to note is the wave modifier. The, the values are capped at a certain range. So uh, if you type in the value yourself, you can actually increase it to something like 20 or whatever, you know, arbitrary value. So I'm going to put 10 cm. That's nice. So it's all going upwards because it's a positive value. So I need a negative 5 cm. It's pointing downwards. Uh, now the other thing you have to wonder is, this is the way the rocket nozzle is, and so can we stop the vibration up there? Yeah, you can, because there is a vertex group implementation in the wave modifier. So go to edit mode, we select all the vertices below it, like this. So in the sphere shape data tab, you create a new vertex group name. I'm going to give mine S5, and then you assign the selected vertices to this group name. Go back to the wave modifier and set the vertex S5. Then you'll notice that the vertices at the very top don't get affected by the modifier. So if we look in shaded view, it's looking all right. You can speed it up by sliding the speed value here. Sometimes if you go further than one, it's still the same. Why? Because your frame rate is 24. You know, by default, Blender has a frame rate of 24 FPS. So let's increase that to 50. And you can see the noise function is much more fast, right? So yeah, let's go with 0.62. Just the geometry alone it already looks like a very nice looking flame. So we need to add uh, materials. So let's open up the node editor window here. Go to node. It's, all right. And then we're going to create a new material for this. And, and we're going to add a emission shader instead of diffuse. So now over here, you'll see that it we're going to have to stop playback so we can see what it renders. And we're going to angle the view so we can see a little bit of what we're going to do. So what we need to do is, if we render this, it's opaque. Because the emission color is going directly to the surface of the model. So every face will be opaque. But if you plug the emission into the volume instead, uh, you get volumetric rendering. So you get a fog to the shape of the flame core. The strength is too much. So let's dial that down to 0 0.03. And there you have it. Then we need to uh, now duplicate. So let's just hit Shift D. And uh, I'd like to make the second shell actually longer than the first shell so that it can overlap some of the faces. And when that happens, some nasty artifacts, which I kind of like, appears, like dark streaks. And that's nice, actually, because by the time we use the compositor to smooth everything out with a blur filter, it, look, it looks pretty much like the cold areas of a real rocket exhaust. So let's duplicate this and make it smaller again, make another smaller one. Let's just make four. Uh, is it four or five right now? One, two, three, four. Yeah, let's just do four for now. 
if you look straight into the you'll see concentric rings and so in order to sort of hide that or mask that a little bit duplicate the outermost shell and rotate it 180 degrees and then scale it down as flat as maybe like this and then the wave modifier remove the wave modifier from it so it looks more like this and the concentric rings are not so prominent now the next thing you gotta do is create a a dummy rocket yeah 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 I think that was great uh, let's just so that now we need to change the material very quickly and plug this back into the surface we don't really want it as an emission shader actually so well, let's just use something like a glossy shader and change it to a red rocket maybe red or orange whatever okay let's just render that and see all right so we got our rocket uh, body as well as the flame core and so now we need to go into the compositor oh we can't we can't use the compositor unless we have a camera so let us put in a camera and I really think we should rotate this rocket to its side so we can have a better camera control now we create a camera and we position the camera and you know, press zero to view from the camera now if you don't see anything it's because you're clipping uh, settings the camera clipping settings is not right so we have to set the end to one kilometer you know anything larger than 10 some centimeters or something and render so that this rendered image gets put into the frame buffer or the render buffer whatever you want to call it it's it displays over here now so if you put a blur filter between the image uh, socket and the you know between these two let's do that filter I like the bokeh filter so you put it in between that then it's going to do some processing let me just put it up there um, there the entire image is blurred but we we want just the um, you know the flame to be blurred so what do you do well first you have to expose the emit emission channel because the flames are actually using a material that has the emissions shader we can always isolate that channel for blurring so we go to the render layers tab the passes section the moment I check mark this emission checkbox the emit channel gets exposed but we can't do anything until we re-render the whole thing so that it just creates the emit channel so let's do that it's going to re-render the whole thing and the emit channel should be there yeah so we didn't connect anything to the composite node so we don't see anything that's fine so we now sever this and just put the emit channel to the compositor and that's how it looks like right we we'll want that to go in here and the image output here so it's going to blur just the emission channel and uh, do a color mix because what we want to do here mix the original image with the blurred image giving it some kind of percentage weight so 80% of the blurred image and just 20% of the original image so what you get in the end is there looks really nice already of course you can add some more stuff to it uh, but for this tutorial I think this would be enough the original inspiration for this was the Merlin 1C rocket test Now that wasn't CGI, that was the real deal. This is something I'm trying to make. Yeah, this is really nice. Yeah, but that's for another video. If I find out how to make one, I'll let you guys know. Thanks!